Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a go at drawing this object. It's a computer mouse, wireless infrared computer mouse. Uh, just a cheapy one, actually, I bought. But I thought it's quite an interesting shape just because of all the curves going in a range of different directions on all surfaces. So it's actually quite a challenging object to try and work out how to draw. Um, we're gonna start off as before with a, a very brief orthographic sketch, just showing the, the, the side and the, the, the front of the object here, I suppose, okay? So we're gonna have a little go of that over here. So looking again at proportion, most important things uh, in terms of uh, getting things to look like what they're supposed to do, I'd say, is the proportion. So we're going to start by saying, OK, uh, this is the length of the object I'm going to draw. And again, by drawing that first line, what you're doing is you're dictating exactly how big it's going to be on the page. Now, looking at the, the length of this in comparison to the width, I'd say probably the, sorry, the height of the object, I'd say the height is probably around about a quarter of the total uh, distance. So it's around about this sort, of, this sort of height. OK, so I'm just going to drop a little box in like this. Again, always used to, uh, useful to create objects, put objects in boxes, and then can start looking at kind of where these curves are, are happening, okay? I'd say around about the midpoint here of the object there, if we was gonna break this down, so if we, if we just put across, uh, across the object like this, find out where our center point there is, we can break this down into two halves, but around that center point there is where these kind of curves start and stop. Now, the curve on the back is a little bit more abrupt, it's a little bit more uh, sharp than the one at the front, which is a little bit more gradual. And it's not, as I say, not, I've drawn it there, it's not a completely straight line, it's got a very slight curve to it as well. But that's around about where it, it comes to there. We can then see at this point, we've got a very gradual curve, which pretty much uh, goes almost through that center point there. So it's a very gradual curve going through like this, uh, through that center point there to kind of make the mouse, okay? So I'm relatively happy with that. There's a few flattened out edges at the front and back, obviously, where the mouse happens, and we could add on the split line there, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, uh, I'm pretty happy with that, okay? And the last thing we can see, we can just see the button and the mouse there protruding just slightly out around about here. I'd say the center point is around about there for that mouse, and obviously, because it is a wheel, it will be a complete circle, so we can construct a circle in and just see how that's kind of touching above the surface there. Now, if we draw some lines across, kind of track these across, project them across from one side, like this, we can then start drawing the side profile. Now in terms of the length there to the width here, this is around about half, okay, it's around about half the product. So that sort of distance there is what we're trying to uh, look at for our side um, uh, profile. Again, all of these these dimensions are kind of estimated because ultimately this is a sketch, okay. I'm, I'm practicing these sketching techniques and, and trying to improve my eye in terms of observational drawing. Now I've dropped a centre point in there because obviously the centre there is obviously where the middle is going to be and the section where the silver part of the, the button is is going to be in that position there. There's a very slight curve from top to bottom going this way, okay, so we're going to just place that in there. Again, I'm just trying to make sure that it's kind of symmetrical around those two points like this. We can see the mouse wheel is just sitting slightly above. In fact, it's a little bit higher than it is there. It just goes slightly above the top point of the, uh, the, the point there, okay? And obviously we'll see that as kind of a rectangle ending at the bottom point there. We can see the silver point breaks down a little bit below that split line there. And what's interesting is we can see that, although you can't see it from this side, but we could, we've got two kind of uh, curve points there kind of coming around about there. So we can see where this, this is actually sweeping round to the front of the shape like that on either side, which again is, is part of what makes this quite a challenging product to draw. And the sides are not completely flat, they go down at a very slight angle and obviously then curve off at the bottom. So we've got some slight angles coming down like this and there we go, okay. There's also some small feet details we can scarcely see on the bottom and you'd see those kind of at the bottom on, on the side over here as well from the, the side profile, they kind of end, but they're, they're literally just a tokenistic gesture on my part there just to indicate that that's where they would be if I was drawing the base of the, the object, okay. So that's my kind of like uh, preliminary drawing just uh, before I start my sketch. Now I'm gonna have a go at drawing this uh, kind of as an isometric, so we can see it kind of like this sort of view. Again, these sort of products, I'm doing this in isometric for these training. You may wish to um, have a go at this in two-point perspective because it does give you the option to see a little bit more. What you'll find in, in isometric is pro we'll probably lose some of the detail from the bottom, but if we was working in perspective, we'll probably see more of the bottom and top if we placed it around the midpoint of a, of a horizon line. But we're gonna, we're gonna go, have a go with this, first of all. So, just like usual, I'm gonna start by drawing my line going up like this, 
and I'm going to be drawing a line coming out around about 30 degrees. Very important to get these points uh, started off. And what we're going to see slightly differently this time is I'm not going to worry too much about um, you know the uh, the lines marking the page. I'm going to just work and try and feel confident with what I'm doing and just accept the fact that the pen is permanent. Okay, it's, it's just a nice thing. Now. What we're going to do slightly differently here, I'm just going to move the camera very slightly, is I'm actually going to start by drawing the top of the object first and then working from the bottom because obviously this tapers down. So if we start from the bottom, we're going to find as we're constructing our schedule, it will kind of go over the top of everything. So as we said from this uh, sort of side profile that we've got here, we can see that the, uh, the, the length, which is going to be coming across here, uh, is about... Uh, um, half of the the actual width of the object there. Okay, so this is this is about half of, of this size from total from one side to the other. So I've dropped in my line there. Okay, so I'm going to have another line around about the halfway point, around about here. So let's just finish this off and draw our box in, construct our box in. Again, I'm looking for parallel lines. Slightly difficult like this where we've got the camera above me like this, uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna persevere with that. So there we go, we've got our first basic rectangle um, drawn in. Now, we're drawing this top profile. I've not drawn it over here, but you can see it's a pretty much a, it's a rectangle with some slightly rounded edges. So we've got our rectangle drawn in, and what I'm gonna do is plot in roughly where I want those edges to be, okay? So I'm put, picking a point on the front where that, that kind of curve is gonna occur, okay? Maybe a little bit further than that. And I'm just projecting that line to the back like this as well and the same on all the sides. So again, if I put a point on one side, I can always project it across to the other side like this and do the same uh, from front to back and from side to side like this. Okay, so I'm putting some, some points in there. Now, the other thing we'll see from this, this profile is obviously it comes up. So what I'm, I'm, I'm kind of drawing on this profile here and then I'm going up to about halfway point on the product. So what I'm gonna do first of all is I'm gonna find my midpoint like this of the, the object going that way, and also find my midpoint coming across like this as well. Now at this point, what I'm gonna do is suggest how high the product is, and we said, again, proportionally speaking, the height there is about a quarter, so again, it's about half of this point here. So this about this distance here is about half of the height of the product. I'm just gonna project that on to one side. Now this is where I'm gonna draw my first curve. So I'm just gonna draw one curve in, kind of going from the front through that center point there, and then touching the back the shape okay this is just a starting point we're then going to project this uh, point across and find the opposite point on the opposite side of the thing and again I'm going to just draw this curve in on the other side now obviously this if it was completely flat like this um, would would finish our curve but obviously we've got these curves at the front as well so to complete this curve what we're actually going to do is where this this line is coming forward and, and would touch the front if it was just square at the front it comes in so what we're going to do is just change this slightly by just bringing that across like this so it's coming around and to the front and again at that same point where this is coming down i'm looking at the point where i checked it so i'm always transferring one point to one side to the other and then transferring that round as well to complete that part of the curve there and then i'm going to do the same on the back so there's my point there it's tracking round from that point there, so I'm trying to kind of make this as seamless as possible, like this, and again, where that point is on one side to the other side, tracking that round like this, where it comes in. And what we've got is quite a complex sort of like two way curve there. This is very difficult to try and uh, construct these, but that's the way I'm kind of doing it on this. Now, looking from the top of the object, around about halfway, slightly under halfway, in fact, we've got the kind of button being placed. There's my halfway point. I'm going to just track this forwards a little way okay so we've got our center point there which is coming up i'm just going to track this forwards a little bit there and say this around about there is where my buttons section is going to be placed this kind of gray section like that okay now looking at the front of the object like this okay we can see that section here if we just plot this in like this from front to back, that section going from the front to back there is where the center part of the curve is. Now looking at the front of the shape, we've got two halves to the button like this. I'm just gonna plot these parts in. I'm gonna say around about there, and around about there is where this button's gonna be placed. And as I say, this curve that we've got on the side, that we drew on the, the side there like that, plotting through that middle point, is gonna be kind of drawn in again for where this button placement's gonna be. So I'm gonna put one curve, 
and another curve there. Notice these are all, I'm trying to make these as parallel to each other as I can to kind of plot that thing. We've got a very slight radius uh, attached to here. So again, you could break this all down and kind of do it. I'm gonna do it by eye in this instance, okay? So I'm just kind of trying to plot where that kind of curved section is on the bottom. I think I've overemphasized that just a little bit on the, the far side, but there we go. And then I'm gonna just plot this central section in where those buttons are, okay? So I'm fairly happy with that. We've kind of got this section uh, drawn out from where the thing is. Again, I think I've overemphasized this, probably slightly smaller radius on that point. Now this, if we look at it from the top, is broken down into probably three sections with the mouse wheel being in the, the middle section. So again, that part there, if we was gonna plot that into about three parts, just by eye again, we're round about there, and there is where we're gonna break this down. So I'm just gonna put a box within a box like this, draw a couple of points, and then again, plot uh, two parallel lines up like this, through that center point there, and on the other point there, to create that little section. And again, this time I'm gonna be a little bit less generous with my curves, just put a very slight uh, edge to those points like that, just taking this radius into account there. So that's where my mouse wheel is gonna be placed in that point. Now, within that point there, obviously we could find a center, I suppose, and work out where the center of the mouse point's coming out. Now it's coming out as a very slight angle. It's not coming out sort of completely straight, but there we go. And we'll say that we're gonna plot one mouse wheel part coming out like this. And that curve, again, I'm gonna transfer across to the other side. So I'm transferring it out like this and where it starts is gonna be kind of parallel to that part there. So we're just drawing in that mouse wheel there. At this point, you know, it's just where you might think to yourself, oh, I wish I'd drawn it in pencil so that we could make this sketch look nicer and uh, more controlled and stuff like that. But I'm happy with the construction of that mouse wheel. We could always effectively put a little bit of shade in here and, and things if we want, if we want to kind of show how that, that kind of mouse wheel uh, was placed. In the center of that mouse wheel, we've got this ridge section. I'm just going to sort of tokenistically put a couple of little just uh, hatches across like that to indicate the fact there is a there's a slight texture on that mouse wheel as well. Now we're going to scroll to the front of the mouse um, and we can see at this point here obviously and at this point there is kind of where the front of the mouse uh, is, the bits that we can see. So this curve ends and the, the kind of the, the curve starts again on the sides. We can see it's broken, broken down into three sections with the central part of the mouse separate to the other. It's quite a flat section coming across there, it's quite distinctive. And this gray section there goes sort of lower down than this part, because obviously the two mouse buttons, we can move them up and down and to that, that bottom part, okay? So they're slightly raised. So I'm just gonna draw these in here, so where the white section ends there, keep tracking that across to the other side as well. And again, we can follow this curve pretty much all the way around the outside. So we're gonna just track this round very lightly like this and show it. I think it does taper very slightly more because it, it obviously it's, it's in its undepressed state at the front. So we're gonna just emphasize that by just making this go a little bit closer to the outside. And then at the back edge there, it kind of comes off at a very slight angle like this. So that is my top curve and kind of mouse wheel kind of plotted out. And we're quite happy with that, or I'm quite happy with that so far. And what we're now gonna do is have a go at constructing this bottom section. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky because obviously on the two sides on this, this uh, elevation here, it comes down like this, but on the front, you can see it also slightly curves in at the sides here. Now what I'm gonna do to construct this is work out where the bottom is gonna be placed. And as we said, looking back at this drawing, it's around about that center point is about where that, that kind of point is there, where the curve starts and ends. So that distance there, I'm gonna just drop this down to this point here, and I'm gonna draw another box in parallel with uh, the, the top box. So the original one that I first drew like this, I'm gonna be dropping some lines down like this, and then just plotting a bottom uh, section in like this. So we can see, I don't know if you can see it hopefully on the video, but there we've got another rectangle on the inside. Again, what I'm gonna do is find the center point of this rectangle like this, and I'm gonna drop some lines in so I know exactly where the center of the box is. There we go, there's a center there, points on the front and back. Now looking at the side profile, we can see from the top, it comes in, it comes down at this curve, and it also does the same on the front. So what we're saying is around about maybe here on the back like this, it's dropping down at an angle, and at the front it's maybe a little bit more, so that's from the back, maybe about to here for the front angle like this, and then we have a base section there. But it's a bit more tricky than that because it doesn't just drop down flat like this, it also comes in very slightly 
as we can see here, okay, slightly in from the, the side there as well. So what I'm gonna do is track in a little bit from that point and place my point there and do the same on the front section. So I've put two points there. Now at this point, now we've plotted that in, we should find that that part there is where the base of the mouse is gonna be placed and it will come up on a slight curving um, part up to the back there where it joins the back part of the mouse and the same where it joins this frontal part just where that kind of uh, the, the button uh, ends, the, the silver part of the button, where the bottom section of the mouse begins. So it's around about here, that's roughly where that curve starts and finish going up to the front of where that mouse is there. So there we have uh, an almost completed drawing. We could, as I say, just put a very small gestural suggestion that there is some uh, feet on the back and the front of the mouse, that's these kind of four seat feet that we can see from the side. But there we have a fairly good construction of the uh, the mouse there. Okay, what we could do again, just to emphasize this, I'd probably do this in another pen if I had the time or uh, the, the inclination sort of thing. But what I'm gonna do is just thicken up and apply a little bit of line weight to uh, outside edges of the mouse. Again, this helps it to kind of bring it off the page a little bit, helps the drawing be a little bit more punchy and a bit more distinctive, and also highlight uh, um, edges on the, the drawing where obviously we can't see additional surfaces. This is just a good way to kind of bring out aspects of the drawing that you want to kind of uh, make look more distinctive and stuff uh, as you're kind of developing this. Uh, but there we go, I'm pretty happy with that. Again, we applied a little bit of shade into that side, so I'm also going to do the same on this side, just put a little bit of a uh, sense of 3D realism to the product. Like so, I'm just cross hatching this so we can see the distinction between the front and the back. Okay, I'm gonna emphasize that split line a little bit more because that would again be an edge that we'd only see uh, one side of. And the front, obviously, I'm gonna suggest that the, it's the darkest point of the product. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, distinct shading and sketching into that. And then finally on the top, again, we've got a slight curve from front to back. So I'm gonna put a very, very light shading just to indicate the fact that this is curving off to one side and the other. And there we go, I'm quite happy with that. So there we have a mouse and my uh, isometric uh, drawing and orthographic, pseudo orthographic sketch of the product. Why not have a go yourself?